We're live again down here in front of the Las uh, Vegas Federal Court, and I'm the lucky one here. <laughs> Boom, bam, baby. Uh, Boy, she pushed you away. <laughs> threw me off. I wasn't supposed to do that. Okay, is it April Fool's still? Wait, is this scripted? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I already got dibs on her. <laughs> That's a joke. Let's so, try again, guys. So anyway. Wait, take, take two, here we go. We're coming back in. So anyway, really not in a good mood. we did not... Um, we didn't have any jurors again today. We didn't have any witnesses again today. We um, had a, just a lot of motions being heard. Um, jury instructions been going over. We um, uh, did, didn't really learn much, but our biggest, I guess, news of the day is Todd Engel. And we'll try to bring this a couple of times for people that keep coming on here. Todd Engel, um, the judge granted his right to um, do closing arguments. So he gets to speak for himself one last time in closing arguments. Other than that, his standby attorney, John George, is still going to represent him and help him with that. But not without admonishment, not yes. without a typical Navar uh, Navarro admonishment, of course, saying that he didn't take it seriously at one point, but now she sees that he's taking it very seriously now but also cautioned him to continue taking it seriously. Otherwise, that would be uh, removed from him. So this didn't come without a very severe admonishment. Exactly. Mm. Um, today, the prosecution wanted to go over again with Eric Parker um, the fact that to make sure that he was not going to take the stand being coerced or threatened by his fellow co-defendants or um, the lawyers and he got to speak again to the judge about the fact that they're uh, preventing all of his reasons to be there from being spoken to in the courtroom and he feels like he has no other option but to take the stand to get that information in. Immediately after he said that, the judge then demolishes him and tells him, well, some of the stuff that is court rulings, and regardless if you take the stand or not, you're not going to be able to get them in. And I know that your lawyer is a good lawyer. I've seen him work many times, and I'm sure he will work with you on these things. So basically telling him, just because you can't take the stand doesn't mean that everything you feel or every reason that you came to go, well, you will be able to bring up in court and pretty much putting his lawyer on the spot to make sure that he doesn't say something he's not supposed to. And, and another reason why we didn't see jurors today at all um, was that we have an ill juror number seven and they're looking at if she's still sick tomorrow at juror number, alternate juror number 14. I'm, it's rumored, I'm uh, disorienting myself, so I'm gonna say it's rumored that that is a possible good juror to have. Um, I don't know all the reasons why behind it. Maybe you guys can expound on that. Um, yes, in jury uh, selection, she said that um, she is from South America somewhere and she's a previously was raised a cattle rancher, likes cows. Um, she said she also doesn't like lawyers, but it's uh, only uh, marriage lawyers and she didn't like the outcome of her marriage lawyer. So. Um, <laughs> But she seems very sympathetic, so if we do end up having her come on, it would be good. So really, today's deliberations, without the jury uh, there, we ended up having what the judge went over jury instructions prior, not with the jurors, not the official jury instructions that they will eventually get after closing arguments, but jury instructions that they were picking apart um, to decide um, to to modify or alternate jury instructions that were being argued between prosecution and defense. And in general, um, I'll just go ahead and roll with that one part. Um, to summarize all, I mean, I have tons of notes, but to summarize what's going on here in this deliberation, so to speak, between prosecution and defense, prosecution government was highly favored, highly favored by Judge Navarro today in regards to their requirements or requests or modifications that signified or insinuated very strongly implied criminalization of just holstering a weapon or freedom of speech criminalizing them also that was brought up often that if you're a officer of the law in uniform and someone has a weapon and the officer of law of, of the law feels threatened 
that that can be interpreted very easily, therefore criminalizing you as a threat. So, I mean, that is huge for this case that she's going to continue to allow that because she is destroying the defense's theory that, they're, they, that they've already put together, but it's going to destroy their theory on the defense's need to show cause for each defendant to show the judge and the jury that they felt they had to defend themselves at times. But they also kept those weapons always holstered. As we all know from the videos, nobody brought out their weapons or held them up um, in that fashion. Um, and, and, and they're going to criminalize them anyways. That's the insinuation I'm getting. I feel like it's, it's already planned. I feel like it's already scripted. I feel like they're already guilty. In, in, in well, they've denied every single everything. motion that the, that the defendants wanted in jury instructions. The, uh, you know, one thing, we cannot talk about the First or Second Amendment rights in the jury instructions at all. It may um, alter the jurors' opinions. They can't even hear about um, the, the right to carry in the state of Nevada or the federal right to carry um, that you can carry a, 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 a holster gun in the state of Nevada. Both state and federal, no, they state said. state and, and federal. federal. It's totally legal. They shut them down, totally, making it sound like it's unlawful, even though we know it is lawful. Yes. Where are our NRA representatives? Where is the NRA? Yes. We need the NRA here because this is a weapons issue. This is a trial. Your weapons and your freedom of speech are certainly on trial, I assure you. But based off our observations, I assure you, your First Amendment right Second Amendment right is on trial here, all of us. We just heard from an attorney and he says one of the <clears throat> biggest things um, in a case like this is jury instructions. If the jurors don't get instructed right on what the law is or what their rights are and how they can do things, that is a big thing for um, to lose a case. And they're for sure setting the stage here by not allowing the jurors to know about their rights to carry guns, uh, their right to open carry federally and state here in the late state of Nevada. First and Second Amendment rights, which was a, one of the lawyers pointed out during these arguments today, that was the biggest issue with this case. This case is about the First and Second Amendment rights. It's a First Amendment rights to protest peacefully like they did, and it's their Second Amendment rights to carry arms. And, and one of the questions too that they're talking about that they're not going to allow the defense to defend themselves with is whether or not the BLM was exercising unlawful for uh, excessive force, um, they're not going to allow them to express the fact that they were exercising unlawful and excessive force. They're not going to allow that they said there's not enough evidence when in fact the defense attorney stated there is evidence though. We do have evidence and they spoke to it and it was still rejected and will be removed from the language. Actually, that is one of the three that I have that she's going to continue to consider because oh. they have to wait for the defense to present that um, evidence before she can deny or approve it. Oh, okay. Another right. thing that was brought up is a missing witness instruction. Um, defense wanted a missing witness instruction because of Dan Love. Mm, yeah. That was denied and they argued again to have Dan Love take the stand. He is necessary to get um, a video put in that was off of a body cam and the defense doesn't know whose body cam it was. They can't prepare, you know, they're given the evidence, but they don't know whose body cams are whose. They don't know what evidence goes with which person. And so they can tell that Dan Love and Pete Santilli are both in the video. Unfortunately, they've already made a ruling that they can't call Pete Santilli and a ruling that they can't call Dan Love. So how are they supposed to get this uh, video in? There was a little bit of arguing that and Dan Love is still not going to be called and she is not going to put Dan Love a missing witness instruction in the jury instruction so that they can talk about it. It was also talked about um, bringing Dan Love up in closing arguments and that was not, um, the prosecution said that they weren't going to object to it or at least not, uh, they don't know what he's going to say or what they will object to when he brings it up in his closing statement. One of the biggest things I want to keep bringing up again here, besides all these jury instructions, is our witnesses. We're still still um, arguing about witnesses, still trying to get some witnesses in here tomorrow. Up here in court today, the, the, um, the defense team has about 10 to 12 witnesses they would like to call besides Eric Parker. 
Witness intimidation is a big thing. NRA phone number 800-672-3888. Oh, we want local. We don't want Washington. Yeah, the NRA. People need to call the NRA yeah, and get them down local, here on these rights. Local Las Vegas NRA down here. Someone who can Firearms come here. Firearms Coalition also. They need to come here and observe these court proceedings. If somebody could find that. Um, how, how you doing, sir? How the that. NRA. I'll talk uh, to you in a minute. How our Second Amendment rights are actually under attack um, in these court proceedings when when the laws still protect us to have and exercise our right to carry and bear arms. Make a call out to the local NRA out here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I know there's got to be a number. Somebody can do some research out there. Make some phone calls. Start start getting a, a chain of calls of people calling the NRA, getting them out here on our on our gun rights. So we don't lose those here in the Firearms Las Vegas, Coalition Nevada. in Nevada. There's the Nevada Open Carry Organization also. And so there's three groups right there. Yes. We need to get out here. We definitely do. Another so, thing I want to bring up is we had uh, probably more than double the people that we had yesterday. It was really wonderful, especially for these jury ins uh, instructions to be going on upstairs. The jury is not in for this, so the only witnesses to that is, is us, and we filled one half, one whole side of the, uh, what do you call Court that? Courtroom. Court yeah, gallery. Yep. And, gallery. Um, uh, an entire row in the other side. So that definitely puts the pressure on them. And we've got to continue this pressure and, and keep pressuring them. You know, the more of us there is, the harder it is for them to sweep this under the rug. I and counted over 50 people today in the courtroom of our side. That was wow. awesome. That was good. And also, again, I did witness, since I'm new here today, once again, as I've seen reported, um, they were being, the U.S. Marshals put out a message admonishing and, and I want to say, I have seen us in Oregon Court, in the U.S. District Court of Oregon, um, with um, good conduct. However, maybe just a little bit louder than I've seen here. So what I've witnessed here is everybody much quieter, much more disciplined, more than I'm used to in Oregon. And um, yet they still got admonished. And there was no reason, no cause, no reason that I saw or heard for anybody to have been admonished whatsoever and, and it was during a break we're on a break so they gave us a little speech while they had us captured they had our audience captured in the, in the hallway and just basically told us we, we're reminding you one more time and we're not and if something goes on if you make a face if you smile and she did specify these things the u.s marshal she specified if you make a face or smile or show any emotional um uh, demeanor or character uh you will not be warned you will be removed from the courtroom um, and that's where they put you in the U.S. holding uh, no, room, they just, or no, no, they just remove that's you? That's just for the uh, defendants. So they just will, and a lot of the time they'll just talk to you and be like, hey, this is what you did, but you okay. can't be asked to and be removed if you do um, yeah. have an outburst or something. I got to tell you, it's a lot stricter. The environment here is significantly more tyrannical and stricter, and people here aren't even doing anything to disrupt the court. That's the point I want to make. There was no disruption from the galley whatsoever the only at thing any I can point. think of what they talked about the day is one of the people in the gallery uh, broke down crying just for a brief moment and I tried to ask one of the marshals what it was about and that's what I understood it might have been about just someone just showing a little emotion of what was going on again not disruptive we seen a little bit of that yesterday a couple of people broke down crying over different incidents nobody disrupted nobody there were some tissues passed and that was it but two days in a row the jury cannot see this the right? jurors did not see this absolutely at all this is just in court what we are seeing is we're seeing the prosecutor prosecutors all four of them laugh, shake their head, yes, no, at the judge. The judge even laughing at different instances. Even laugh at Eric today. Parker. Mm -hmm. She even laughed yeah. at Eric Parker again today. Again today. Admonishes him about taking things seriously, yes. yet she sits up there and she laughs at in, in, in just moments, things that she thinks she's funny. So who's not taking this case seriously? I've seen her laugh several times. I, these are my observations yep. and I just got here. So... We're waiting tomorrow. This is the big thing. We're waiting tomorrow to see what witnesses we're going to actually be able to allow to have. If they're going to have witnesses tomorrow, we're supposed to be back here at uh, 8.30 tomorrow morning. 
uh, Sharp to be in court. We've had uh, two approved it, today, right? Some Somebody's oh, asking if they can be directed to the best newspaper sources. Uh, they just got off with NRA headquarter, headquarters. Review oh. Journal. An article just came out today from our uh, Review yeah, Journal. Las Vegas, Las Vegas Review Fox Journal. Yeah. Well, Another thing that I wanted to bring up is um, the, after we did the jury instructions, the judge was asking the defense if they're going to be done by the end of the day tomorrow. So the prosecution has had six weeks and we're already getting rushed along and we haven't even begun our case. We have had an opening statement and that is it. Oh, are you going to be, are you going to be done tomorrow? Um, and then this is Thursday, 11 o'clock. The jurors aren't going to show up till 11 o'clock on Thursday because they have some technical dis issues. Well, a lot of these issues stem from when we started this case, we were supposed to be done by the 27th of March. And so when they were doing the jury selection, they had told them it would go into April. And there was some, some jurors that said that they had issues with things that were happening in April. And so on Thursday, one of the jurors have a doctor appointment, so we won't be able to start until 11 o'clock on but that's on no reason for us to have to rush through our case. No. And I really felt that we pushed along, like get it, get it done, get it over, so we can be done with this. And, I, I feel and we like haven't even had one day, not even one day, with the jury in. And we're we're two, we have had two days right now. Yesterday, 15 minutes with the jurors, and today, not at all. And today we're already over with. It's close to two o'clock and we're done out of court. We're ready to go home until tomorrow morning. So we get one day tomorrow, possibly have witnesses coming tomorrow. We got two witnesses approved if we want to use them and Eric Parker. So there's three witnesses possibly tomorrow. We have up to 10 we want to use. Oh, I almost forgot too. We do have a little bit of good news. Well, I did a call out for mainstream media to get their butts down here and Fox 13 did come here and Andrea Parker had a good interview with them. I had an Fox? interview with them, but I also it told them ABC, right? they need to be up K there. KTN or KMTV. KMTV, Fox 13. Uh, Fox. He told me he was Fox 13. Tom. No, uh, Fox is Channel 5. He told me he was Fox 13, but okay, I'm not from here, so whatever. I can. At least you get they names wrong, too, there. like I do. Right? <laughs> the reporter, Tom it's George from Channel 13. Me. It's all rubbing off on me. But, you know, I told him he needs to be up there observing the court proceedings and the atrocities that are happening there. So look out for the interview. I doubt that they, um, Jonathan Skipper recorded the whole thing live. So look at uh, Jonathan Skipper's Facebook page for the live interview. You'll see the whole thing unedited there. Unedited there. Yeah. I did Adrian's, too. Correct. Yep. And good. And we got, Triple. there we go. So... So, that was a little bit. So scary. one last time, we've got Todd Engel. He can do his closing arguments again. So that's the big news for the day and the best news. He was all smiles and so excited when the judge actually granted him that back. So we're excited for him. He does excellent with his um, own defense. And uh, we're all excited to hear his closing arguments there, too. Um, anything else we're missing? Get yeah, here. Uh, yes, some we are more. missing more boots on the ground. That's what we're missing. We need more still. We need thousands we do. here. You need to be here, people. Uh, Margaret was a key witness. Uh, what's going on with that? Is she going to be able to Margaret's testify? Margaret's not going to be used, and she's not being allowed to use. All the witnesses are still being intimidated. All of them have to have lawyers before they can testify. Yeah, um, I was going to say, I think that they, were, they would allow Margaret to take the stand, but I believe the guys don't want to use Margaret for fear <laughs> that she could be arrested or incriminate herself. She and yes, so yesterday she, yesterday she was told that she was not, <laughs> well, one of, could not well, testify. Yesterday. Today they said when it came up again that even if she did, she'd need to consult yes. a lawyer. Yes, yeah, so they're saying that she could possibly testify, but it, she would be one of those individuals that would need to be appointed a lawyer immediately, have to talk, and this is what we went through yesterday when our witness came in, they were appointed a lawyer immediately. We waited in the courtroom silently for almost 40 minutes while the lawyer talked to him, and um, then we still couldn't even go forward. He was willing to go forward at that time, and then this morning he's not willing to go forward any longer. It is intimidation tactics, and um, so I, I don't think they're going to call Margaret because they don't want to put her through that. They know she will do it. She's got a heart of gold. Well, she but, said yesterday she doesn't care. She doesn't care. Um, 
So right. you're pretty much saying that, that the witnesses themselves are being treated as if though they're being tried. Yeah, the exactly. witnesses are being told basically. These, these are witnesses. Not these exact words, but if you take the stand, you will be indicted and you will leave in handcuffs. That's straight up intimidation, people. It is, it there you go. You it have it right intimidation there. Intimidation all the way around. And the prosecutors tried to justify their action today yeah. and say that it wasn't them; it was their own choice. That they're a presented an attorney, and their attorney tells them this. It's not the prosecutors, but it is. It is the prosecutors because the prosecutors are stating this and telling them their attorneys that they have a possible um, investigation going on uh, with several dozen other people and if they testify they could possibly be arrested so uh, these real quick on that uh the rumor about uh, garrett frenner that was uh walked away in handcuffs we oh he's know. he's watching my live stream okay. he's right now okay. that's a confirmation <laughs> so that so <laughs> that rumor watching? yeah oh. so that rumor okay. is false and it came from a lawyer oh, supposedly so we, uh, so we then don't. that's more intimidation yeah. tactics if they're telling one of our witnesses that another witness that was willing to testify got arrested then that's even more. You know, our lawyers today tried to uh, and tried to get immunity for these two gentlemen that are supposed to take the stand. He tried to get immunity for just that one testimony, and they would not grant that, even though Hugh Gargone was given immunity so that he could come in and testify for the prosecution. We cannot get a limited immunity. And a limited immunity would basically be anything they say in court at that time cannot be used against them. And um, that won't be granted so that we can get our defense up there. One other thing about the Facebook post that I want to make just a quick little mention of it. The Facebook post, you know, Facebook is supposed to be just social media, fake news. You don't listen to it. You can't believe everything you read on Facebook. But the prosecutors up here have over 500 uh, different Facebook uh, exhibits that they're claiming that is facts and true. And the defendant, defendant one of the uh, uh, lawyers for the defendants brought this up today, uh, just briefly, that these things are considered, considered, considered evidence and considered truth, but Facebook is supposed to be considered fake news. And uh, so how is their whole case based up on fake news and fake information that anybody could just say anything on Facebook? Interpretation. Prosecution yeah. is taking cliches, everyday cliches. Like, what's that one that was um, highlighted today? Um, it, not ma it matters how you stand, but something about um, I, I want my I want to take my country back. I want to take my country back. That's an everyday cliche Donald Trump uses. And just saying that is being implied from the prosecution as some sort of criminal speech with another implication. A so it's a, a threat. threat. They're saying it's a threat and in turning into criminal speech by assuming and a asserting what your what your perception, what you meant to say by reading your mind. Clivet Bundy and said, "Whatever it takes," is the statement. Whatever, whatever it takes, takes. and they're right. saying that's a threat. Whatever then, it takes, and then. And, yeah. We could be all smiley on Facebook, and five minutes later, we're really not smiley. <laughs> so it no. uh, it doesn't really matter. So, but that does a, matter how you stand. Yes, oh, it does. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was funny. So <laughs> is that all they we have for now? I think but that's about it. The, I've been sure it's in there. Yeah. So I guess that's all we have for today. We'll be back here again at 8:30. We need more boots on the ground. We need more people here. She what? just flew okay. in. What can this people morning. bring? Flags, signs? Yeah, bring it all. Flags, signs, Flags, whatever balloons. you can bring. Yeah. yeah. Come down here, pom -poms. Come, bring notepads, bring ink pens, come cameras. To court. cameras. Yeah, you should bring your cameras, of course, out here. We should all be, just in case, you never know. And you can do your own updates with your own network of people. Um, you might have family and friends that have, have very little education, but you know what, guys? May I suggest that it's time to plant that seed and give them the truth now instead of holding it back because you're uncomfortable discussing what you already know. Maybe it's time that we get out of our comfort zones with our family and friends yeah. that we care about so dearly so that they know the truth. I'm not talking about arguing with your loved ones. I'm talking about just making sure you share your material on your own Facebook wall. It's your wall. And, and we have that right to educate those that we love. If we keep keep it all yep. secret, what we've learned, and come how are we going to spread it? Come down here and help True. pass out jury, nullifi uh, jury yeah. nullification pamphlets, constitutions, citizen rule books. We'll, we'll even supply them so you can um, help us pass them out if that's all you're able to do if you don't want to go inside the courtroom. Um, 
Come read down your declaration of independence. Yeah, read your declaration of independence. That's so. my message. So tomorrow morning, it's 8.30, and Thursday, it's going to be 11. So don't come down here at 8.30 on Thursday. Nobody will be down here. But 11 on Thursday, 8.30 tomorrow morning. Okay, guys. Okay, see you later. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Me. God Thank bless. Thank you for watching All Undivided right. Co-Conspirator News. <laughs> otherwise that would be uh, removed from him. So this didn't come without a very severe admonishment. Exactly. Um, today the prosecution wanted to go over again with Eric Parker um, the fact that to make sure that he was not going to take the stand being coerced or threatened by his fellow co-defendants or um, the lawyers and he got to speak again to the judge about the fact that they're uh, preventing all of his reasons to be there from being spoken to in the courtroom and he feels like he has no other option but to take the stand to get that information in. Immediately after he said that the judge then demolishes him and tells him well some of the stuff that is court rulings and regardless if you take the stand or not you're not going to be able to get them in and I know that your lawyer is a good lawyer I've seen him work many times and I'm sure he will work with you on these things so basically telling him just because you can't take the stand doesn't mean that everything you feel or every reason that you came to go well you will be able to bring up in court and pretty much putting his lawyer on the spot to make sure that he doesn't say something he's not supposed to. And, and another reason why we didn't see jurors today at all um, was that we have an ill juror number seven and they're looking at if she's still sick tomorrow. Well, everyone, we're live again down here in front of the Las uh, Vegas Federal Court and I'm the lucky one here. Boom, <laughs> <laughs> bam, baby. Uh, Boy, she pushed you away. <laughs> threw me off. I wasn't supposed to do that. Okay, is it April Fool's still? Wait, is this scripted? Yeah, yeah I already that... got dibs on her. <laughs> That's a joke. Let's so, try again, guys. So anyway. Wait, take, take two, here we go. We're coming back in. <laughs> so anyway, really not in a good we, we did not, um, we didn't have any jurors again today. We didn't have any witnesses again today. We um, had a just a lot of motions being heard. Um, jury instructions been going over. Tomorrow at juror number alternate juror number fourteen. I'm. It's rumored. I'm uh, just orienting myself, so I'm going to say it's rumored that that is a possible good juror to have. Um, I don't know all the reasons why behind it. Maybe you guys can expound on that. Um, yes, in jury uh, selection, she said that. Um, yes. She is from South America somewhere, and she's a previously was raised a cattle rancher, likes cows. Um, she said she also doesn't like lawyers, but it's uh, only uh, marriage lawyers, and she didn't like the outcome of her marriage lawyer. So, um, <laughs> but she seems very sympathetic. So if we um, uh, did. Didn't really learn much, but our biggest, I guess, news of the day is Todd Engel. And we'll try to bring this a couple of times for people that keep coming on here. Todd Engel, um, the judge granted his right to um, do closing arguments. So he gets to speak for himself one last time in closing arguments. Other than that, his standby attorney, John George, is still going to represent him and help him with that. But not without admonishment, not yes. without a typical Navar uh, Navarro admonishment, of course, saying that he didn't take it seriously at one point, but now she sees that he's taking it very seriously now, but also cautioned him to continue taking it seriously.